One of the most asked questions in my train video progress is this. Is this train generated with GPU? Or you can see here from my last video, a guy asked me, does this support compute shader? I want to clear everything in this video, but please note, I can be wrong. I don't say everything that I am saying is right. If you believe something else, please put a comment under this video and we can discuss about that. In the recent years, the GPU power has increased a lot and many use the power of the GPU in their software like video editing software and so on. Especially in video game, we can see a revolution because of the GPU power. But that does not mean everything that uses GPU is faster or better. Still many programs use CPU and they are much faster. Now let's talk about train. First I ask you this question. Does the train level of detail need to be updated each frame? For example look here. When I go into the train, new train will generate it and also grass will get updated. And my answer to the question is, the train absolutely does not need to get updated in each frame. And this train algorithm which I wrote is done by CPU. Even if the player go fast enough, we cannot notice train with low level of detail which still does not get updated. Now let's ask another question. Does the CPU calculation cause the frame rate drop? Absolutely not. Even one frame per second. I test this train many many times. When train calculation is on, compared to the time when the train calculation is off, the frame rate is same on all kind of the train. It is right that CPU cannot calculate train update each frame like GPU, but if you can program a good low level stuff with C++, not GD script, and calculate everything in another CPU thread, and just send those information which train need to be updated for the next update, and only in one frame, just swap the last train update with the new train update, and no FPS will going to drop and nothing will happen. But there is a big, big advantage if we use CPU instead of GPU. Let me tell you why. When you create open world game, you want that your player interact with the world. Is that right? Now, if the train information for height map, for grass or everything else is on RAM and is on the CPU side, you can read that easily and change some factor in the game. For example, here, I want if the player is entered in the grass, uh, it get height and the enemy not see the player. Or you can change the sound of the footstep of the player when he walks on the sand or he walks on the dirt. If those are in the GPU memory side, okay, you, you can want, do one thing. You can put one copy of the information on GPU and one copy on the RAM. You can do this, but that is not efficient. Now you may say GPU also needs something to draw. Yes, I send some data to GPU to be drawn. I also send normals to GPU because creating normals in GPU is really intensive work. You should read multiple time from height map textures. What I did in my train system is that I sacrificed the RAM memory for the sake of the GPU memory. For example, for this train, which is a 16 km by 16 km train, the total amount of height map texture data and normal data on my GPU is around 100 megabytes, even sometimes less than that. And only, and only the height map data for a 16 kilometer by 16 kilometer train is around one gigabyte. So I reduce that a lot. Actually, the land which are further away from the player has lower resolution of height map texture and normal textures. And also they exist, you know, you can see those mountains far away. You can see them, but they have lower resolution of height map data and also they have lower resolution of uh, mesh. So this is my opinion. Everything is not faster or better when it's done with GPU. And if you have something in your game which does not need to be updated each frame, just use CPU and you have more control over it. You can also disagree with me and till the next video, have a good time.